so one of the things that the media has talked about is that people are using ERs inappropriately and they're using ERs as a surrogate for the rest of the healthcare system. Uh, both of those are false. Um, inappropriate use in the literature has long been abolished in terms of a phrase we're talking about frequent users. Yes, these are people that have many visits to the healthcare system. Uh, between four plus and 17 or more visits in a given year. So they're heavy, heavy users of the system. Um, they're not just going to an ER at the same time they're going to an ER. They're seeing a primary care doc. They're being hospitalized. They're going to urgent care. They're going to health links in Fosante. They have many, many contacts with the healthcare system. If you look at the health characteristics of these people, um, it is not like they don't have any health characteristics at all. They may have some different health characteristics than what we would typically see of an ER user. You know, they're not car accident patients, those types of things. These are people that have a lot of chronic disease. Mental illness is a huge issue for these people. Um, one of the conundrums I think that we're in is I don't know anybody that would go to an ER uh, three times a week and sit there for extended periods of time just for the fun of it. Um, these are people that are falling through the cracks. A lot of the needs of these people traditionally aren't met by our healthcare system. You know, there's not a lot of cost in an ER that's an operational cost per se. A lot of it's fixed. You have to have it to, to have it there. The other thing is, though, is a frequent ER user uh, doesn't come in and have, you know, MRIs and CAT scans and blood work and, and medical consults, the things that are expensive during a visit. Lots of times they're seen by a person, right? A nurse practitioner, uh, the ER physician. And there might be a drug prescription, but then, then they're sent on their way. So they're not, yes, they are in the ER, but typically they're not a heavy, heavy uh, cost, if you will, to the, to the ER system. Not all frequent users, but certainly some of them, there's high rates of people coming by ambulance to an ER and then leaving without being seen. So an EMS transport is a costly transport. Um, Winnipeg, that's estimated at about $500 a transport. So when you have Health Science Centre upwards of four times a day having an ambulance show up and then people leave without being seen and you start to do the math on that uh, every day of the year, that adds up in a hurry. The most effective strategies, and they're all pilot projects at this point, but the effective strategies are to take someone like a social worker, okay, um, and the patient comes in, they're seen by the doctor, they go to the ER, the social worker in the ER. That social worker is responsible for linking that patient up with all of the things that are going on in the community. So to fix some of those things that maybe aren't um, challenges they're dealing with that belong in the traditional healthcare system. That if they're dealing with abuse, if they're dealing with housing, if they're dealing with lack of access to food, uh, substance abuse, all of those types of things, those are things that the social worker can look up to or to, to link up to. And as a general rule, pilot projects that use that type of a strategy where they, where they take you know that the ER is the hub of care if you will but they don't use a traditional care provider to do it they use a social worker for example those have been very very effective